The Jetavanaramaya is a stupa, or Buddhist reliquary monument, located in the ruins of Jetavana Monastery in the World Heritage City of Anuradhapura, Sri Lanka. At 122 meters (400 feet), it was the world's tallest stupa and the third tallest structure in the world when it was built by King Mahasena of Anuradhapura (273–301). He initiated the construction of the stupa following the destruction of the Mahavihara. His son Magavana I completed the construction of the stupa. A part of a sash or belt tied by the Buddha is believed to be the relic that is enshrined here. The structure is significant in the island's history as it represents the tensions within the Theravada and Mahayana sects of Buddhism. It is also significant in recorded history as one of the tallest structures in the ancient world, and the second tallest non pyramidal buildings after Pharos Lighthouse of Alexandria. The height of the stupa was 400 feet. 122 meters making it the tallest stupa in the ancient world. With the destruction and abandonment of Anuradhapura kingdom in the 11th century, the stupa with others was covered by jungle. King Parakramabahu in 12th century tried to renovate this stupa and it was rebuilt to the current height, a reduction from the original height. Today it stands at 232 feet 71 meters. The structure is no longer the tallest, but it is still the largest, with a base area of 233,000 square meters 2 square feet. Approximately 93.3 million baked bricks were used in its construction. The engineering ingenuity behind the construction of the structure is a significant development in the history of the island. The sectarian differences between the Buddhist monks also are represented by the stupa as it was built on the premises of the destroyed Mahavihara, which led to a rebellion by a minister of King Mahasena. This stupa belongs to the Sagalika sect. The compound covers approximately 5.6 hectares and is estimated to have housed 10,000 Buddhist monks. One side of the stupa is 576 feet 176 meters long, and the flights of stairs at each of the four sides of it are 28 feet 9 meters wide. The doorpost to the shrine, which is situated in the courtyard, is 27 feet 8 meters high. The stupa has a 8.5 meters 28 feet deep foundation, and sits on bedrock. Stone inscriptions in the courtyard give the names of people who donated to the building effort. Topic. Conception Following King Jetha Tissa's death his brother Mahasena was consecrated as king by monk Sangamita. Under the monk's influence King Mahasena brought about a campaign against Orthodox Theravadins dwelling in the Mahavihara. The differences between the Theravadins and Mahayanans escalated to an extent to which a penalty was established to any person providing alms to monks dwelling in the Mahavihara. The Mahavamsa quotes Sangamita. The dwellers in the Mahavihara do not teach the true Vinaya, we are those who teach the true Vinaya, O King. The Mahavihara was eventually abandoned. The monks dwelling at the premises moved to Malaya Rata and Ruhuna, this followed by the pillaging of Mahavihara by Sangamita and Minister Sona, all valuable were transferred to Abhyagiri Vihara. 
The pillaging prompted a rebellion by Minister Megavanabaya. The minister raised an army from Malaya and set camp by the Duratisaka tank. King Mahasena marches an army to meet Minister Megavanabaya, where negotiations ensue the night before the battle and the king apologizes for the pillaging and agrees to build a vihara at the grounds of Mahavihara. The Mahavamsa quotes the king, "...will make the vihara to be dwelt in yet again, forgive me my fault." Sangamita was assassinated by a laborer on the instructions of a wife of the king, following his demise and the construction of Paravina by Megavanabhaya marked the return of monks to the site of Mahavihara. Thus the construction of Jetavanaramaya began and offered to the monk Tissa, but the monk was accused of a grave offence upon investigation and proof by a minister, monk Tissa was disrobed and expelled from the order. The Dakinagiri monks were then entrusted with the premises of Jetavana Vihara. Topic. Design and construction As the largest ancient stupa constructed and one of the tallest ancient structures in the world, the structural ingenuity and engineering skills employed for the construction are significant. The foundations of the structure were 8.5 meters deep and the size of the structure required bricks which could withstand loads of up to 166 kg. The solid foundation lay on bed rock and the dome was constructed of full and half bricks and earth fill, the unique shape of a perfect ellipsoid allowed for stress and thus allowed the construction of the large structure. The Mahavamsa describes the foundation laying, where fissures were filled with stones and stamped down by elephants whose feet were protected with leather bindings. The bricks used for the construction were a significant development of ancient Sri Lankan engineering. The bricks used for Jetavanaramaya had a composition of 60% fine sand and 35% clay. The bricks could withstand 281 kilograms in two. Linear elastic finite element analysis under self-weight produced a maximum compressive stress of 839 kPa at the bottom center, thus the maximum stress in the dome is ten times less than what the bricks could withstand. Finely crushed dolomite, limestone, sieved sand and clay provided the bonding material for the bricks. The clay employed was pliable and thus accommodates movement within the structure. One of the sides of the brick was roughened to trap the bonding slurry thus limiting lateral movement. The stupa was then covered with lime plaster, the plaster used contained seashells, sugar syrup, egg whites, coconut water, glues, oils, plant resin, sand, clay and pebbles. The plaster also provided waterproofing for the structure. The Mahavamsa also mentions the use of copper sheets over the foundation and arsenic dissolved in sesame oil to prevent insect and plant intrusions inside the stupa. It is estimated that Jetavanaramaya took 15 years to complete and would have required a skillful workforce of hundreds, including brickyard workers and bricklayers, and stonemasons. Topic. Late history The Jetavanaramaya was under the monks of the Sagalika sect. The Sagalika sect was closely linked with the Abhyagiri Viharaya. 
Towards the end of the Anuradhapura period, Jetavana had developed into one of the three fraternities of the island along with Mahavihara and Abhyagariya. The fraternities were united during the reign of King Parakramabahu I. A posada constructed by King Sena I was destroyed by fire. King Agabodi VI constructed and added a new posada. Chola invaders during the reign of King Udaya IV destroyed the gold images of Buddha by King Sena. Repairs were completed by King Mahendra IV. Juma, a Sri Lankan merchant, presented King Silakala with a Mahayana book Dhammadhatu brought from Benares. King Silakala held a festival annually in celebration of Dhammadhatu. Monks of Mahavihara have boycotted the festivals, citing the Mahayana origins of the book, but were later persuaded by Abhyagiri monks to participate in the festivities. The leadership of the Mahavihara was later accepted during the reign of King Agabodi I, following the defeat of a public debate between the monks. Topic: Conservation. Until 1909, the colossal structure was covered with shrub jungle. Monk Kumbuk Dhamarama of Salabimbaramaya Temple of Gamanpita received approval to clear the stupa and the court from the Atamasthana committee. The approval was subsequently cancelled as the monk decided to settle down. Palanaru Sobita thereto sought and received permission to continue clearing the premises, but approval was once again cancelled when the monk initiated the collection of contributions. However, the monk refused to leave, in the legal procedures which ensued he was forced to leave. Conservation work has been funded by the income from ticket sales, mainly to foreign tourists to the three cultural triangle sites of Anuradhapura, Palanarua and Sigiriya. Bricks were burned using the same kind of mixture that was used by the builders of the original Dagoba. Excavations have revealed artifacts indicating that Sri Lanka was the primary entrepot for trade activity connecting the Indian Rim countries as well as the Mediterranean and the Far East, and artistic influences that point to a shared culture in South Asia. See also Ancient stupas of Sri Lanka List of tallest structures built before the 20th century Timeline of three tallest structures in the world Ancient constructions of Sri Lanka Architecture of ancient Sri Lanka Architecture of Sri Lanka Ruwanwelasaya Adamasthana Mahawamsa equals equals notes <laughs>